All right, y'all. So, you guys see the title. Dwayne Wade's son or daughter now wants to identify as transgender. And uh, the, the internet, social media has been going ham about this for the past three or four days. And I want to give you guys my two cents on this. What's up, guys? Because I've seen people, I've seen people's posts about this, and you're either you either feel one way, you either feel strongly one way, or you feel strongly the other way. Okay, well, actually, there's three different sides to it. You have one side who's like, well, Dwayne Wade's son, he's too young to be deciding whether he wants to be straight, gay, transgender, or whatever the case might be. Then you got another side who's like, well, he should be able to choose, like, regardless, he should be able to choose what he wants to be because it's his life, it's his choice. Okay, fine. And then you got the other side, you got the third, the neutral side who's like, well, it ain't my child, so I don't give a damn. Like, who cares? It's not my kid. All right, this is how I feel about it. Now, I will agree. Uh, the thing is, I done looked at all the sides, and ain't neither one of them really wrong. I mean, they, I mean, you, you got this pros and cons to each side. But this is what I think about it. First off, what I have to say is it should, like, I'm going to go ahead and take the high road first. I'm going to go ahead and say that regardless, it shouldn't matter as to what, all, right, all jokes aside, joking aside is that I don't really think that it should matter. Like, it's his choice. It's his, like, the thing is, like, Dwayne Wade, like, he can do whatever the hell he wants. It's his house. It's his, um, but yeah. I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, and it's, it doesn't bother me. Like, if that's what you want to identify as, then that's fine. However, this is where it get a little bit of inter This is where it get a little bit of interesting. That is a child. That is a twelve year old boy. Like a twelve year old boy, he doesn't. He's not in the right mindset to make a decision like that. Hey, what's going on, uh, Jackie? But yeah, if you're a twelve year old boy, then you. The thing is. What's up, Brandon? Trying to say what's up to everybody so they can get the... I might open up the phone lines, too, just to see what um, a lot of y'all got to say about this. Like, if y'all want to... If y'all want to call in and y'all want to chime in, too, then y'all let me know. But I think the thing is, I don't really think the people would have that much of a problem with this if Dwayne Wade's son was, like, 16, 17 years old. Because it's like, hey, if he's 16, 17, 18 years old, and that's what he wants to do, then it shouldn't matter what his sexuality is or what his sexual preference is. I'm fine with that. I mean, if you're old enough or if you're grown enough to make your own decisions, then by all means, you can identify whatever the hell you want to identify as. But see, this is also an issue with it. It's because it seems like Dwayne Wade is in a lose-lose situation. All right. What I'm talking about is this whole, this whole situation, Michaela. This whole situation with Dwayne Wade's son, he, um, he doesn't want to be a boy anymore. Now he wants to identify as a woman, or he wants to identify as a female. Like I said, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but there, the only real issue the only real issue that I have with it is, is that he's still a child. He's still a minor. Like, And then a lot of people want to associate that with him because... This is the way I feel about it. A lot of people can feel like, well, if you don't agree with that, then you're homophobic. I'm not homophobic. I just know, damn it, I just know the difference between right and wrong. Like, if I'm fine with somebody expressing themselves, I'm fine with people being themselves. Be yourself. Be who you are. I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Christian, Muslim, Jew, atheist, straight, gay, bisexual, transgender, or anything in between. I don't give a damn what you are as long as you're happy. Be yourself. That's the only thing. Like, be yourself. If if you if this is really who you say you are, then by all means you can uh, you can uh, be whoever the hell you want to be. But there's a line that you have to draw. But thing is, Dwayne Wade is in a lose lose situation because um if Dwayne Wade if he was to say I don't, if he was to be like I don't like son I don't support this uh you need to you need counseling or you need help or something else like that um then people will be like oh Dwayne Wade is a bad parent. He's not letting him child be himself. He's like denying his child uh, freedom to pick what he wants to be, 
But then people's like then it's like on the other side, if like Dwayne White says, Well, I fully support my son, I fully support with his decision and what he wants to be, then the other side will be like, Well, he's too young to decide what he wants to be. You are not you are giving a child way too much power over their life. Especially when not even they're, they're a minor, they're not even of legal age. You're giving your child way too much of a say so over something like that. But then again, like I said, it's his sexuality. And he might change his mind as he gets older. You never know. But a lot of people, on, like I said, once again, I'm, I know I keep flipping back and forth. I'm trying to like be as positive as I can. But people are seeing, the thing is, there's people who see this as an agenda to, um, to emasculate the black man. Like, oh, they're trying to make all black men gay. They're trying to push this, ho this homosexual agenda on us. And I don't really think that that's the case. Like, one person deciding that they want to, one person deciding that they want to identify as something else is not going to, it's, it's not going to change the whole black community. It's not going to do that. Like, like I said, you know, I have, I'm completely fine with whatever the hell it is you want to do. But I mean, because it's not my house. It's not my child. So why do I give a damn what somebody else wants to do in their house or how they want to raise their children? I don't care. But on the flip, like I said, I keep, you know, on the flip side, like I said, there does have to be a line that you draw somewhere because exactly. I feel the same way, Brittany. Like, you know, when you're 16 years old, 16, 17, 18, when you're old, when you get a little bit more of a view on the world, then I feel like that you should be able, you should be able to be more open about that. But look at, um, Magic Johnson's son. Magic Johnson's son is openly gay and he didn't really op get as much backlash as it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Daz, we are not a monolith. I mean, it's true. But the thing is, you know, I, I, I want to say that one bad apple does not spoil a whole bunch. But you know how it is. You know how America... The thing is, you know how America looks at blacks. You know how America looks at us. And thanks, Celestine. But... And also, you got you to gotta keep this into account, too is there are some people who are like, I mean, well, at least, like, well, everybody's like, well, you're looking at all, you, like, they say, well, homosexuality is the last thing that's um, killing or destroying the black community. It's like, well, what about black men going to jail? Ain't that destroying the black community? What about black men doing drugs? Ain't that destroying the black community? What about um, black on black crime? Ain't that destroying the black community? What about absent black fathers? Ain't that destroying the black community? Yes, yes it is, in small doses. I mean, but thing is, like, you if you say one thing is destroying the black community, then you pretty much got to say that everything is destroying the black community. But the thing is, a lot of people don't understand that if you ain't a part of the solution, then you're a part of the problem. And yes, I will commend Dwayne Wade for being an active black father. That's, you know, because there really isn't enough black fathers in their children's lives. And that's something that you really got to get, you got to, that's like... Some people are like, well, at least Dwayne Wade is a father who's in his children's life. At least he's taking care of his children. I mean, okay, I'll give you that. I'll buy that. But see, here's the thing. This is the problem. This is the big ass problem that I have with American society is, is that a lot of y'all, y'all want to give people so, so much credit. Y'all want to give people, you know, all the praise in the world for doing the bare minimum. Everybody's like, well, at least Dwayne Wade, he's not a deadbeat. At least he's in his child's life. Duh, stupid. He's supposed to be. He's doing what a father is supposed to do. Y'all are giving people credit for, for doing the bare minimum. He, as a black man, you are supposed to be in your child's life. To show them, to show them the way. But, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read these comments. I know I'm going, I know I'm going off on y'all for a little bit, but still. But still, like, does any, anybody got any comments or anything Any um, they want to chime in? I actually like to get a co-host. But, like I said, I feel like he should, the thing is, everybody's like, well, you feel that, like you said, you don't care, but then what if it was your son? If it was my son who, at 12 years old, said, Dad, I think that I'm gay, or I think that I'm, I think I want to be a woman now. I would sit my son down. And I'll be like, okay, son, are you sure that this is what you want to do? Are you sure this is what you want? And if he says yes, I'll be like, well, okay, that's fine. But you don't, the thing is, 
if you, you are free to express yourself or you're free to do what you want when you are of legal age, but when you are in my house, you represent me. And the thing is, a lot of people like mistake homophobia for that because... Also, Dwayne Wade accepting his child's gender identity does not mean reassignment surgery. Yeah, I mean, but, but, but uh, like that's a big thing because a lot of people, a lot of you know, trans people are getting sex changes and everything. But like, because y'all remember what happened with Bruce Jen I mean, sorry, Caitlyn Jenner now because the whole gender identity thing. Because every because like when y'all remember when um when Bruce Jen when Bruce Jenner first did that interview. And he first came out about it. The interviewer asked him a question. He was like, well, do you want to identify as a homosexual? And then Bruce Jenner says, no, I don't want to identify as a homosexual. He said, I'm not gay. I'm just a woman in a man's body. And I guess Dwayne Wade's daughter feels that way now. I guess he feels like he's not gay. He feels like he's just a woman. And I'm like, well, okay. But... Here's another thing, is we live in an era of social consciousness. We live in this era of, we live in an era of social justice. We live in an era of equality. That's the kind of era that we live in now. But like I said, you know, there, there's, there's got to be a standard somewhere. I, I, say, I say all jokes aside, but I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all a little joke right now. But like, this, this is just me joking around for a little bit. Now, Dwayne Wade's son is like, well, he's like, well, he, he identifies as a woman, but a lot of people would consider that to be dishonorable. Dwayne Wade's son is lucky that he lives in America and it's 2020. He's lucky that he wasn't born in the 1800s in Japan because you know what they'd be like? They'd be like, you have dishonored the family. The punishment is death. Shing! That's pretty much what it'd be like. They feel like a lot of people in different cultures, in different times, they will feel like that what Dwayne Wade's son is doing, they feel like that would be dishonorable to the family and like i said does the actions of one person really mean dishonorable to the whole family normalization doesn't make it right i mean like i said you know that's true that's why but thing is do you blame the individual or do you blame who because like i said Dwayne wade i think he's doing a good job as far as being a loyal parent he's being a good parent by being there for his child i will go ahead and i will give him that the fact that he's an act, <clears throat> excuse me, I will go ahead and give him the fact that you know, he is actually an active black father, which in America, there's not really enough of. And Angel, you said that you came out at 12 as bisexual. And that's another thing is there is a double standard with men and women with the whole sexuality thing. There's a, there's a, there's really, there really is a huge double standard with that. Like women will get judged for it by other women, but men, if they were to come out as trans, bi, or gay, they would not only get judged by other women, but they get judged by other, they will most likely get, they will, they'll get judged by men and women if they were to come out as liking both genders or liking the, the same gender or being, or wanting to make a transition. But like I said, the way I feel about it, like it's, it's, I feel like it would be more of his decision if he was actually of age. Like I said, if he was 16, 17, 18, are we even having this conversation? No, no, we're not. At least I wouldn't be having this conversation. Like I said, the way I feel about it is, is I don't really care to the, I mean, the thing is, I feel like you should only care if it's your child. I mean, what Dwayne Wade and his wife do in his children, what they do in his house, that's their business. That's their problem. You have no say so over what they do in their house because it's not a fact. The thing is, what Dwayne Wade's children do and what his child does or how he raises his kids is not affecting you. That's the way I feel about that. But like I said, at the end of the day, so, like I said, society's becoming a lot more open with sexuality and everything. Like, the thing is, like, we have, it's hard to break th certain things down when you got 17 different gender identities and everything, because they have trans everything. They have 
asexual, they, you know, asexual, bisexual, homosexual, heterosexual, pansexual, uh, 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 um, am I, like, I don't even know anymore. They have all these different kinds of sexual orientations that I can't even keep up with no more. And pretty soon, it's not even going to matter. Everybody's going to be, like, you can identify as whatever the hell you want to identify as. Come on, we already got transgender, and we already got transracial. Yes, there's actually a, a woman a few years ago called Rachel Dolezal who said that she wanted to identify as a black woman. Knowing damn well she was born as a white woman. So we got transgender, transracial. What the hell's next? Am I going to be able to identify as trans species? If I was to walk around tomorrow and be like, I'm not a human anymore. I'm half dolphin, half zebra. What the fuck would y'all look at me like that? Y'all be looking at me like I'm a goddamn idiot. So, yeah. Like, what, like the thing is, where do, we, where do we draw the line? That's what I'm trying to figure out is. Is, like I said, what's, the thing is, what, what was taboo, what, what was once taboo has now became normal. Like, everything is... No, like the thing is, we're normalizing everything. Hold on, let me see. Um, you said your daughter is nine and she came out as a lesbian. Um, your daughter. Okay, and see, have you talked to your daughter, Michaela? Have you talked to your daughter about this? Because Okay, I'm gonna go, all right. I'm, let's 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 back up here for a second. What age were y'all when y'all when y'all first found out about sexual attraction? At what age were you when you became sexually attracted to whatever you came, became sexually attracted to? Because I'm gonna be honest, like I first became sexually attracted to women. I'm going to go ahead and say the first time I found a woman sexually attractive, I've had to be about at least five when I called myself liking girls. It was the strangest thing, too. Like, because it was this beautiful woman who I was walking with my dad with. I saw her at Tanglewood Mall. We walked through the mall, and I looked... I, the thing is, I was holding my dad's hand, and my dad, like... I saw this pretty ass lady walk by and I was like, I had the hard eyes before the hard eyes emoji was even a thing. But yeah. But the thing is, like when you're that age, like how are you? The thing is, you're not in your right mind. Like I feel like if you are below, I don't know, like I said, if you're, if, like I said, if you're under the age of, of well, 15 to 16, you're old enough to know sexual, what sexual attraction is. You're old enough to know that. And I feel like that's when you're old enough to make a decision. You were in elementary school when you had your first crush. Mm -hmm. A lot of people had their first crushes, believe it or not, in like second or third grade when they first started becoming attracted to the opposite sex or whatever. You were about 11 or 12. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you gotta, and also, you have to keep in mind that everybody is different. Everybody develops later. Like, I mean, not everybody develops later, but everybody develops at a different rate than other ones. You got some people who are early bloomers. All right. But <clears throat> you got some people that are early bloomers, and then you got some people who are late bloomers. But I feel like it's people's responsibility as a parent to sit down and talk with their kids about stuff like this. Because God forbid you go they go around and they learn it from someone or something else. Like, you know, learning about sex, learning about like, you know, because we we live in a social media era. We live in an age where it's like if the parents don't teach their kids something, then what they gonna do? They're gonna go on the internet and find out about it and they're gonna get all the wrong information. And your first you all right. Chantel, you said your first real crush was in the fifth grade. Mine was in, like I said, I was five years old when I first found a woman attractive. But my first real crush wasn't until about second grade. Let you rephrase that. She says she likes girls, not boys. You sat down and talked to her about it. She's almost 10. And every day she says she's going to marry a girl. But the thing is, as a child, I mean, you know, 
with you being a parent, her being a child, you do kind of got to take that with a grain of salt because you know kids, kids don't even know what the kids don't even know what breakfast cereal they want to eat. <laughs> so how the hell are they going to make a life decision like that? And Sam, you're right. It is a maturity thing. Like I said, but thing is, you have to understand that people mature at different rates. Like, it's because right now I'm 30 years old and I don't have any kids. Most people my age have at least one, two. So, all right, let's, let's go ahead and say that. Well, most people in my age are, are parents by now. Let's just leave it at that. And a lot of people are confused now about how to raise their kids because it's like, do we teach our kids the old way, like uh, the way our parents taught us, or do we adapt with the times and let society, let this new wave of society raise our children for us? What's wrong with society is that people want to change the Bible just by the way they want to live. Yes, and then there is that whole religious aspect of it. And the Bible, while... You know, while I I have, you know, read the Bible, hell, I even got some Bible scriptures down there. But, um, now, like I said, I'm not, I'm in no way, shape, or form homophobic. I'm completely accepting of people, whatever, who they are, as long as they're open about it. But, you know, there's some people who are like, well, homophobia is killing, you know, homosexuality is killing the community. Well, if homosexuality is killing, like, you know, you know, you, like, you don't support home, uh, support somebody being gay just because, you know, they like the same sex, then what about people who have the babies out of wedlock? What about people who are having premarital sex? What about people who are drinking and using drugs um, excessively? That's a vice. That's something that, you know, in the vi in the Bible says that's um, something like that. So you, you can't just pick and choose which side. The thing is, you, I understand, like, there's more than one side to everything. Like, you can be, cons like, you can't, you don't have to just stand one way on, on, a, on a certain topic. You can be conservative about certain things, and you can be liberal about certain things. Like I said, but where, the thing is, the point I'm trying to make is that where do we draw the line? Like I said, because if you want to get a sex change, or if you want to date the same sex, or if you are physically and sexually attracted to both sexes, then by all means, that is your choice. Do what you want to do. And then this whole conversation starts. Everybody's like, well, I asked everybody what, what, when did they first become attracted to someone sexually or, or otherwise. And then there's this big debate as to like, well, being, being gay isn't a choice. You're born that way. I don't know if I completely 100% agree with that because... Everyone's like, well, you can't be like, you know, there's no such being, there's no such thing as being born gay. Being gay is a choice. Then, I mean, like I said, you know, you can really, you can kind of really go head to tails on that because that's what the whole trans th transition, making a transition thing is for. Because you might decide, you know, I guess you you can apply this to anything because. I guess you could apply it to even like in a different race. Like one day you might be attracted to somebody white. The next you might be attracted to somebody black. You might be attracted to somebody who's Hispanic. And yeah, society does change, but the Bible never changes. But the thing is, you also got to keep into account that can you really, let's see, can you really what? And I, re I actually read a quote on Instagram that I posted on Facebook, can you control what you're attracted to? Not necessarily. You really can't control what or who you're attracted to because sexual attraction is natural. It's a human thing. It's, but uh, it, it, I mean, it really is. I mean, it really does depend as far as race, sexual orientation. You like, the thing is, you like what you like. And I don't judge anybody for liking whatever the hell it is they like. Because it's their life. Bottom line I'm trying to say is, people are going to live their lives the way they want to live their life. They're going to do what they want, when they want, and who they want to do it with. And you can't stop them. So by all means, if you like the same sex, different sex, same race, different race, 
We all got one life to live. So you might as well just live this life doing whatever it is makes you happy. If you're, ha I mean, the thing is with Dwayne Wade's son, if he decides that he wants to completely transit transition, if he decides that he actually wants to be, you know, if he wants to go through a sex change operation, then by all means, let him do that. I mean, that's, you know, he can be happy. But like I said, if it was my son who said that he, you know, doesn't identify as male and he wants to be a female, I would ask him, is he sure that this is what he wants to do? Are you sure? Is this how you feel? The thing is, and like I said, because we all, because Angel, you said you can't control what you're attracted to. But the thing is, the beauty of this country and the beauty of this is that all of us, we, we all got the right to choose. Well, yeah, Dwayne Wade's daughter, she now. But like I said, we all have the right to choose what we want to be and what we want to do. But like I said, it's all, but the thing is, to me, I don't care because it's all about freedom. It's all about self-expression. It's all about doing what it is, whatever it is that makes you happy. And if you're happy as the opposite gender, then by all means, be happy. As long as, I mean, the thing is, you're not, as long as you ain't forcing it on nobody else, as long as you ain't hurting nobody else, if you're not, I mean, as long as you're not all, oh, well, this is my way or the highway, you will get your child counseling. Uh, like I said, it's like, like I said, I don't, I wouldn't get your child counseling. I would just sit them down and be like, are you sure? Do you really feel this way? Now, I would, now the thing is, a lot of people say that gender dis, I, I forgot what they call it. It's like identity, gender dys, dysmorphia or something like that. They said that that is a mental illness. But I don't think that homosexuality is mentally ill because they're like, well, if they if they call themselves if they 12 years old or 11 years old and they call themselves being gay or, or bisexual or um, want to transition, then they need mental help. I don't think they need mental help. I just think that they need whatever it is that. I mean, and the thing is, Blair, I do think that you are right to a certain extent because it, 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 it does start. It starts at home. But at the end of the day, as parents, parents really can't only do so much. But the thing is, would you rather for your children to learn it from you about sexuality and the way other people are going to treat them? Or would you rather for them to go out in the cold world and learn it on their own? Because them kids out there, they're going to be ruthless about it. I'm telling you that right now. And the only reason why I know this is because I know gay people. I know gay and um, I actually have uh, gay and uh, lesbian friends who have went through this. And especially in the black community, because in the black community, homosexuality really is looked down upon. I mean, for the most part, because my, my parents, they from the old school. And the thing is, I was that way, too. You know, I was that way, too. I mean, I was to the point where I was using the F word, you know, calling gay people the F word or whatever. And now that I've grown up, it's to the point where it's like, well, it's not my life. It's their life. I don't care. They can do whatever it is they want. Well, they can do whatever it is they want that what makes them ha makes them happy. But now I won't even use the F word no more to describe gay people because it's not. I mean, because I even talked about this is calling a gay person the F word just as bad as calling a black person the N word. Uh Yes and no. Yes, because calling a gay person the F word and calling a black person the N word, yeah. It's like they're both offensive. They're both wrong. The thing is, they both look down upon. But the thing is, can you really compare homosexuality or to racism? Because blacks have been going to race blacks have been going through racism. For the past four centuries and still to this day where blacks are going through, you know, we're still being looked at as second class citizens. And in some places in this world, blacks still have little to no rights. And a lot of people, a lot of people are saying this right now. And I do completely agree with this. It's like people in the LGBTQ community, people in the gay community got more rights and more privilege than people in the black community. And that's messed up. And I mean, it really is how. If you're gay, you can get away with, you know, you, there's more, there's more people who will be tolerant of you 
by your sexuality than of the color of your skin. And that's messed up. Because I even, I even shared a meme on uh, Instagram where, because everybody's like, well, because y'all all seen that story where I shared of that, um, that, that Texas teen who had his, uh, who he wasn't allowed to, he's not going to be allowed to graduate unless he cut his dreadlocks off. And everybody's like, well, it's not okay for a, a teenage boy to have dreadlocks, but it's okay for a teenage boy to decide that he wants to be a woman and wear a dress. But yeah, and you see, that thing is, that's where it's tricky, Brittany, because it's like, you don't see two gay people going up and dapping each other. You don't see two gay people going up and dapping each other talking about, hey, what's up, my F word? What's up, my homo? But thing is, if you, you see two black people dapping each other all the time talking about some, what's up, my nigga? And the thing is, White people get offended by that. They're like, oh my God, they use the N-word. And it's like, what the hell are y'all talking about? The N-word was used as a derogatory term for the past 400 years. But then black people turned it around and used it as a term of, en of endearment. But, like I said, in that sense, you can't really compare the word, the F-word, to the word nigger. Because it's two different, it's two completely different contexts. Like, if you use the F-word to describe somebody gay, that is offensive. But the thing is, it's the same thing to where if somebody who's non-black or to a lesser extent non-Hispanic, depending on the context they use the N-word in, it's considered offensive. It's considered racist. But if a black person uses the black, if a black person refers to another black person as the N-word, it's not racist. And I know that's a double standard too. Like, well, if it's okay for a black person to use the N-word, why is it not okay for anybody who's not black to use that word? Because of the history behind it. Duh. And I don't understand why anybody of any other race would want to use that word in a negative connotation. I don't understand that. Like, I, the thing is, like I, said, I don't know if anybody on here is gay or whatever. But the thing is, have you ever heard two people refer to each other as the F word or as a homo? I don't think you ever, I, like, I don't really think you ever have. But, but still. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, now I feel like I'm past that. I'm not going to use the F word to describe nobody gay. Whatever. I mean, I feel like that. I'm past that. I feel like that's beneath me. But every, like I said, but everybody really do got their own sexual preference. And I ain't going to judge nobody or I ain't going to make nobody feel different than what they, they are. And yeah, Blair, I mean, yeah, sometimes they, they do it, like, gay people do it just to be funny, but still, it's just them. It's not offensive to gay people when other gay people use the word homo or the F word. And yeah, Tia, you are exactly 100% right, because we live in an era of bullying and cyberbullying, and... I'm pretty sure that Dwayne Wade has told his son, like, now, if you're sure this is what you want to do, there are going to be people who are not happy with the decision you make. There's going to be people out there who are going to tease you, bully you, pick on you just for being yourself. And you need to learn to be um, more uh, respectful. You need, I mean, not more respectful, but you need to be mindful of that and not let what they say get to you. Because let's face it, everybody watching this, we've all been through bullying at some point. For how we look, what we wear, how we talk, um, how we were raised. Everybody, like, you know, being a man, being a woman, whatever. The thing is, everybody at some point in their life has gone through bullying, gone through picked on. Picking on somebody because they fat. Picking on somebody because they short. Picking on somebody because they gay. Picking on somebody for being nerdy and for being black. I mean, or, because I'm going to tell you this. I was picked on for being a black nerd. Like, even to this day, I mean, like, I don't get bullied for it. I'll mean, be damned if somebody bullied me. <laughs> I wish the hell they would. But y'all know what I mean. But still, like, even to this day, a lot of black, um, alternative black people, they get bullied just for liking other stuff. Like, I know people who I grew up with who liked uh, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And they got bullied for that. And that's the thing, is 
you should, I'm going to go ahead and agree with this, is that you should not be bullied for being yourself. That's the worst thing you could do. Because there's people out here who are living a lie. They're not being themselves, and they get more love than people who are being themselves. And that's the sad, that's the sad fact. And yeah, I will agree that Dwayne Wade should have, um, like, he should have just kept that within his home. But you know, but thing is, when you're a public, but see, here's the thing, Blair, that's a problem, is that when you're a public figure, stuff like that is going to eventually find its way out. Like I said, it's like what happened with Magic Johnson's son. Yeah, I mean, because I guess, because of, you know, the LGBT, thing is, the LGBTQ community is starting to get stronger and stronger, and they're starting to become more acceptable. Like I said, because in the past 20 years, from 2000 to now, homosexuality was taboo and it was looked down upon. Now it's becoming more and more accepted. But then it's like, like I said, the, the worst part about it is that <coughs> Zaya, Zaya, Zaya is, he's, he, well, she is a, she, whatever, is a minor. That is still a 12 year old. That is a child. And there's pedophiles around here. Not even around here, but there's pedophiles People who sleep and have a sexual attraction to children are around here. And y'all got to keep that in mind. And you were bullied for being tough. Like I said, you know. I mean, I do agree with it's, it's being pushed too much. But like I said, at the at, you know, at some point, you got to, you do have to um, step in. But thing is, is that there are more women supporting this than men. And it does not, you know, supporting Dwayne Wade's son transitioning into men. And it's not surprising to me. And like I said, they feel like that being, you know, they feel like that men who don't support this are being homophobic. But, and see, and then everybody wants to ride this whole toxic masculinity wave. Like, oh, it's, ta oh, like, you know, if you don't support this, then you're part of the problem. Your toxic masculinity is what's killing the black community. No, it ain't toxic masculinity that's killing the black community. It's lack of masculinity killing the, killing the black community. Because there's a lot of little boys that are forgetting how to be men. Men don't know how to be men anymore. And the only reason why is because there's not a strong black father figure in the house. And I'm, and y'all y'all tell me if I'm wrong with this right here. Because there are some mothers. There are single mothers out here. And, and I'm going to tell you this. A father who is active or a father who actually gives a shit would never condone this shit. But there are literally single mothers out here. Y'all see these little pageants and stuff like that. And y'all been seeing this. Y'all see these posts on like Facebook and stuff. And on Instagram, and even this, there's TV shows like behind this, is that there are these mothers who are like dolling up their six, seven, and eight year olds daughter, dolling them up and dressing them up to look like grown ass women. And then you wonder why pedophilia is going as is at an all time high. The thing is, a bigger problem is that y'all not letting y'all's kids be kids. Y'all want them to grow up too fast. And it's the same thing with Dwayne Wade's son. Yes, you can identify as a woman. Yes, you can get a transition. But at the end of the day, you are a child first. Be a child first. Experience your life. You need to... He had to tell before it was leaked. Exactly. That's exactly what, that's exactly what the reason was. But back to what I was saying. Regardless of his sexual identity or his sexual preference, he needs to live his life as a child first. You are a child first. Be a kid. Like I said, the main problem is that we're not letting our kids be kids. And then you wonder why they walking around. Because nowadays, it's 2020. It's not unusual to see a grandmother who's 30, who's my age. That's not unusual. Because think about it. She get pregnant at 15, you know, and then she have a daughter, she have a kid or two. Then all of a sudden, then her daughter gets pregnant at 14 to 15. Then guess what? Now she a grandmother at thirty, and that that you know these days now that's pretty common. And then what what next? You're gonna be a great grandmother at forty five. I've seen that before. Don't like that, that's something that I have seen. Like oh my granddaughter is having a baby, and I'm like it was it was this one woman who I used to work with at Target. Her name is Valerie. Um, uh, she had uh she was uh only thirty seven. Um, let's see, she was thirty seven. Her daughter was 21 and her son was 19. Her daughter, who was only 21, was already on her third child. And her son, who was 19, who was going to the military, he said, well, like he's, he's on his second baby already. 
So she already has five grandchildren and she's not even 40 yet. So it ain't unusual to see a grandmother who's um not even who's in her mid to late 30s. Gra I remember grandmothers used to be I remember you for you to be considered a grandmother you at least had to be in your mid 50s. That's the way it used to be. But see here's the thing. I guess a lot of I guess the reason behind that is because a lot of people I guess they want to have child they want to have children because these days life is short. Like, life is not as long as you think it is. I mean, you know, we've seen what happened with all these deaths in the media going on. I guess a lot of people want to hurry up and have kids because a lot of people these days, their life expectancy is not as long as it used to be. Well, I ain't, well the average life expectancy, like, from birth to death is about 75, 80. That's average life expectancy. If you, if you live, that's, you know, if you're 80 years old, then you're considered living a full life. But, yeah. This says a lot about Dwayne Wade as a man to accept this kind of shit. But like I said, you know, Kevin, you do have a point. But at the end of the day, what goes on it? We can't control what goes on in his house. At the end of the day, that's his. Um, he's pushing the transgender agenda. But like I said, you can't really. The thing is, it's his house. You can't tell a man how to raise his son. You can't tell a parent. But because I'm going to tell you all right this right now. The second that you try to raise, the second that you try to tell another parent how to raise their child, that's the second that some shit's going to pop off. Like, because, you know, people are going to get pissed off me. Oh, well, you can't tell me how to raise my son. You can't tell me how to raise my daughter. Da -da 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 -da. Like, you know, but because the second that you do that, <coughs> the second that you try to tell somebody how to raise their kids, it's the second that they're going to try to pop off at you. And the thing is, you got to be mindful of that. You got, you just got to walk away and be like, hey. That's your child. That's your kid. You can raise them however the hell you want to raise them. And that's the reason. That's, you know, that's how I feel about that. But, see, here's the thing. I was raised in a two-parent household. And a lot of, I hate to say this, but a lot of black children, a lot of black kids who I grew up with, they're not raised in two-parents household. They were either raised by a single mother or they are raised by a single father, ACC. But, yeah. But y'all wonder why, like, a lot of these children are struggling with gender identity. It's because they don't have both parents in the household. Now, Dwayne Wade and uh, Gabrielle Union, they are both active parents. But the thing is, I feel like they shouldn't put it out there in spotlight. I feel like that they should be educational about it. But a bigger problem is, is that there's not enough positive education. I feel like that as, as parents, what's going on, uh, Floyd? But, oh yeah, kind of, oh yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You missed me going in on, well, you, I'll um, talk about it, well, I talked, I went on live. I don't want to tell a man how to raise his kid, but when you make it public. I'm talking about this whole, um, Dwayne Wade's, uh, daughter going, tra well, son, whatever you want to call it, going trans situation. Like I said, really, at the end of the day, to me, it doesn't matter, but that is a minor, that is a child. And he needs to sit him down and talk to him about it and ask him if he's if he's sure that, th that this is what he wants to do. Like I said, I mean, it's your decision. But like I, I talked about this earlier in detail. Like I said, you're going to have to go back and watch because a lot of people will feel like, well, they feel like that being gay or being trans isn't a choice. They feel like it's something that you're born with. And I don't completely agree with that. I mean, because if you can decide... <coughs> I feel like if you can um, decide to be trans, then guess what? That's a choice to a certain extent. Or if you decide that you want to change your gender. Because we live in an age as to whether we do or not. False, you never struggle with gender identity being raised by your mother. Like I said, but you know, but the thing is, a lot of people are complaining. The thing is, that doesn't really happen with females. I mean, um, it does. But it happens with boys with an absent father figure in their life to a lesser extent. And yet, Kel Kelvin, that's what I was saying. Like, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if Dwayne Wade's son was 16, 17, 18. When he's of legal age, then it would be more acceptable. At least I wouldn't mind it. But like I said, at the end of the day, that is still a child. He is a minor first. And that's something... <coughs> 
That's something that he and the people around him has got to understand. But Dwayne Wade's got two other sons. So, yeah. But the thing is, a lot of people, especially black men, black men get pegged for being homophobic because they may or may not, they may have a negative attitude towards this. And the only reason why is because of how black men, a lot of people feel like, well, that black men are being emasculated in the media lately. And the thing is, black men, when they have a son, it's kind of like uh, Simba in The Lion King. It's like when black men have a, a child, when black men have a son, it's like, well, this is my boy. This is my son. This is the fruit of my loins. When I'm gone, he's going to carry on my name one day. And then they feel emasculated or they feel like that they went wrong if their son turns out to be gay. It doesn't matter. That's his daughter's shoe. Like I said, to me, it doesn't matter because that's their choice. <coughs> You grew up wishing you... And yeah, exactly, Blair. Like, there's girls who are tomboys. I was saying the same thing about Brute, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, Keisha. But, yeah. But, yes, it's... Uh, uh, Zaya is a she now. So, yeah. But, yeah, back to what I was saying. It's about what the child wants, period. But the thing is, like I said, it's still a child. That is still a minor. They can only have so much say over what they want. Like I said, if they're 16, 17, that's fine. I don't really give a damn. But, yeah, and the thing is, I hope Dwayne Wade had a talk with, his, with, with Zaya. Saying that, well, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to judge you for who you are. So you better get ready for that. And like I said, I don't really think that people should be bullied for being the way that they are. Regardless of whether they, or how they look or what they identify as. I don't really think that they should. But yeah. And all men are like that. Black men are being ostracized more. I mean, that is true. Like I said, because a lot of black men feel like that the son, that their son is going to be their heir. Because the black life in America, it really is not, um, it's not valued as much. Because everybody wants to know, it's like, well, why, are black, why do black men hate gays so much? Why are black men so homophobic? Why are they so down with the gay culture when gays haven't done anything to them? Do y'all want to know why? It actually goes back to slavery. Like, well, what do you mean? What does slavery have to do with this? Because here's the thing. For the longest time, we have been castrated, emasculated, and basically been made to be the white man's bitch. Or basically, you know, our slave, you know, enslaved. Because, see, here's the thing. Everybody wants to be like, well, women were raped. Women were doing... But the, see, here's the thing. The slave owners and the slave masters, they weren't just raping the women. They were raping the men, too. And the thing is, is that black men... You know, black women had to watch their men get emasculated and castrated. But guess what? <laughs> if a black man did something to upset the slave master, you know what happened to him? He would get his testicles cut off as a punishment. So that way he couldn't have babies anymore. And yeah, Keisha, that's what everybody was, is saying right now. It's like, well, you you supporting this because you supporting Dwayne Wade, you know, for having a trans son or trans daughter or whatever. But what if it was your child? What if it was your daughter? What you do is you sit them down and you talk to them. You educate them about it. Because, Keisha, I, list, I, I talked about this earlier. You missed it. How it's a double standard between men and women. But there's I don't really think that there's too many women transitioning to be a man. I mean the thing I ain't saying it didn't happen. It does happen, but still. Like, I guess like the because the thing is it's more acceptable. I don't know why it's cool for one person and not the other one. It's just it's it's always just been strange to me as to why they could do that.
and also, Keisha, you got to keep in mind with the population, too. You got to keep in mind that especially in America, that there are like that women outnumber men by a vast amount. Hold on. Let me hold on. Let me look this up. I got to be a computer geek for a second. And the thing is, like I talked about this earlier too, about toxic masculinity. And like I said, I feel like a lot of people they say they feel like the toxic masculinity is what's killing the black community. Like I said, to me, it's not toxic masculinity; it's lack of masculinity. It's a lack of a strong black male father figure in the house. And like I said, half of that, and some of the reason behind that is because there's too many men who are either in jail, on drugs, got a bunch of kids by a bunch of baby mamas, or they're dead. That's the biggest reasons why there's not enough strong male role models in the house, in, in the home nowadays. Okay, so as of 2020, the total U.S. population is Transsexuality has zero. Look up Flay Monroe's Breakfast Club interview. But yeah, the total American population is 331 million. No, it's an increase of people wanting to fit in. Okay, I just looked it up. There are 331 million people in America. But guess what? Out of that, 300 mil out of that 331 million people, there are, there are only 156 million men to 175 million women. So women almost all... The thing is, is that women outnumber men by almost one and a half percent. So damn near this in America, this almost for every one man, there's almost two women. And the thing is like everybody has their own motives and reasons as to why, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, some people, they do think that it's a fad and a trend, but like I said, it's not a fad and a trend. It's a lifestyle. I mean, you know, <coughs> like, like I said, how somebody chooses to live their life is completely up to them, and I won't judge them for it. And like I said, I actually went on and compared this to racism. It's like, well, if, some, if somebody asks you, it's like, well... You don't want nobody to judge you because you're black. Why are you gonna judge somebody because they're gay? Like, like I said, it's more. It's to a like I said to a certain extent, it kind of is the same thing, but not really. Like I said, you know, it, it just depends on whatever context that you want. You decide that you want to put it in. But yeah, like I said, back on this whole population thing, women outnumber us, and then.